Mats Madu. We are the children, we are the children, the children of God. Tam Kam Kam. We change our world, we have what it takes to do it smart and make it smart. Welcome to our world, Smart Do. Welcome to our class service yet again for our CRA lesson. I hope you're doing well. I'm also doing very fine and wish to continue from where we stopped last time. Now, uh, today we are going to look at the subtopic uh, accepting ourselves and others. Accepting ourselves and others. Now, what is to accept? Now, for example, when you're given something by somebody, you take it. You're given a sweet. You take it. You are given a book. You take it. That means you have accepted it. So accepting is taking something as it is. Taking something as it is and making it yours. So when you talk about accepting ourselves, it means taking yourself as you are. Taking yourself as you are. Also taking others as they are and making them part of you. Now there are many things that make us fail to accept ourselves and others. For example, uh, we may look at our bodies and we find that uh, our bodies are not uh, desirable. They are not desirable as maybe that of our friends. Maybe a certain friend of yours is quite tall, yet you are short. But you find that you would prefer to be tall. So we don't accept ourselves. Others may be as our friends. Maybe we find them they are very talkative. They are very talkative. They like giving very many stories. Yet ourselves we are quite quiet. So therefore we find we don't want to take them as they are. Now, there are many factors as we have said. Another thing is low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. As you learned earlier on in class 6, there is a, there is a sub unit you looked at uh, referring to self-esteem. So, when we have low esteem, we find that uh, we do not uh, accept ourselves. We all the time want to compare ourselves with others whom we think that uh, we, they are doing better than us. But let us remember that we are created, we are all created, created in the image, in the image, image and likeness, likeness of God. That is according to the book of Genesis. When God created man, he created man in his image and likeness. So we ourselves are in the image and likeness of God. So therefore, what should we do? What we should do, one, is to appreciate, appreciate, appreciate ourselves, ourselves, and we should appreciate ourselves and others the way we are. The way we are, we should appreciate ourselves and others and not try to make comparisons of how we think we should be or how we should live. We should also look, look at our weaknesses. We should look at our weaknesses. And once we realize our weaknesses, what should we do? We should work to strengthen, to strengthen them, to strengthen, uh, to strengthen them. Let not our weaknesses show or make us hinder us from achieving what we want. We should strengthen them, and through that, we shall be better people. Also, others, we should help them in the challenges that they have, in the difficulties, in, the, in their own weaknesses, uh, we should help them. Now, another thing is that uh, we should uh, look at our strengths. At our strengths. Now, what should we do with our strengths? Now, our strength uh, should be used to help uh, others. To help uh, and serve others. Our strength uh, should be used to 
help and serve others. For example, one might be very good at academics, maybe mathematics. So that strength of yours, whereby you understand that particular subject, you should use it to help the other members of your class, your friends, to achieve and be as good as you are. So therefore, we should not dislike people. Do not. You should. You should not dislike people. Why? Once you dislike somebody or other people, it means you are judging them. You are judging them by the way they are. You are using external appearance or external things to judge them. Now, once you judge them, remember, God said, with the same standards that you judge other people, he shall use the same, uh, the same measurements to judge us. So we have to be careful. As we are judging others, let us, don't, let us not judge them by the way they look, by their weaknesses, by the areas that they find difficult in achieving or doing. Now, what does the Bible tell us? Now, in the book of uh, John, chapter 7, Verse, uh, verses uh, 24. The Bible reminds us that stop judging by external, external standards and judge by the true standards. We should judge people, we should judge people using the true standards. Now, which are these true standards that we are talking about or are being mentioned in the Bible? Now, one is the way you serve God. The way you serve God. Judge people by the way they serve God. Are they moving in the right direction as the word of God says? So, that is one way. How again do they serve others? How do they serve others? Especially maybe the needy. The needy in their community. So, those are the true standards that a Christian should judge another person. Now let's look at the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 to 7. What does the Bible tell us? Chapter 13 verse 4 to 7. Love is kind. Love is patient. It is not jealous, unconceited, or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrong things. Love is is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, its faith, hope, and patience never fail. So, the qualities of love, as the Bible tells us, loving others. Remember, you have to love others. Love others as you love yourself. So, when you love them, when you love others, when you love others, what does it mean? One, you'll be patient with them. You'll be patient with them. Now, that means you'll give them time to be able to amend and strengthen their weaknesses. You'll give them time. You'll not just use that to humiliate them or make them feel they are not worthy. Number two, love is kind. Love is kind. So, once you see somebody in trouble or in a situation that they require assistance, you will be able to help them. Now, love is also an unselfishness. Love is also unselfishness. Unselfishness. Just like God gave his son and he died for our sins, God was not selfish. So we should not be and we should not be selfish to those who do not have. Again, love is forgiving. Forgiving. So for those who wrong us, for those who wrong us, we should also be ready to forgive them so that we are forgiven by God. So therefore, once we look at love in this manner, we shall always find it easy to accept ourselves and others. Remembering that the greatest commandment as Jesus gave is love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. So therefore, 
as we move around, let's be ready to accept other people as they are. Let's be ready to accept ourselves as we are. And any weak areas that we have, we work and ask God to help us strengthen them. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good time. Bye-bye.